Hello students and colleagues. I'm going to talk to you today about steps in software development and this would be developing small pieces of software like programs written in classes. Uh, this will not be a it's not a system development class, it's a programming class. So you're just going to keep steps pretty short uh, as needed for the program development. Okay. So let's begin. By the way, I'm Dr. Satish Singhal from Rose State College in Midwest City or Oklahoma City, California. Thanks. So why software and what does it do? Why do we need software? Uh, all the ones that are beginning to program may need to know that. So basically software is ubiquitous today. Ubiquitous means it's everywhere. Without software you cannot complete even the simplest task such as calling someone on any type of phone like even landline. Without software you cannot drive your car or even watch TV. And basically what does software do? It converts raw data into useful information and today human survival is intimately linked to timely, accurate and useful information. So what is that? Examples of that are for example timely production of timely prediction of severe weather and propagation of this information through early warning systems has become very essential. And even mundane tasks such as issuing a paycheck requires data processing through software. That's why software and what does it do? It's very important to understand that. Okay, now we get to the steps in software development. Uh, the steps in software development are termed software development life cycle, short for that is SDLC, software development life cycle. And today we will discuss only a small, small part of SDLC that is important, that is needed for writing programs. When software development is limited to writing programs, that are not actually a large system, then SDLC reduces to a smaller number of steps that are shown in the next slide. <clears throat> and this is the smaller SDLC. First item is you have to collect a user requirement. If program doesn't do what the user wants, then program is useless. That's why collecting user requirement is important. Then you have to analyze your user requirement for following items. You have to see what data are being input, that they could be variable and constants, and you may have to choose name for them. Okay. And then you need to figure out, in order in the data processing uh, period, what arithmetical, logical, and other processes the computer will perform during program execution. And this includes collection of all the formulas that will be used in the program. And then you need to figure out what kind of output will take what forms and what are the details of the output. For example, what variables and constants are being outputted, what process data are being outputted, and in what form it should be, whether graphical or command line or any other form. And then you need to develop flowchart based on the analysis and the user requirement. And then you need to develop pseudocode for the computer program to be written. Flowchart could be high level, we'll discuss that very soon. And then you choose a programming language to code the pseudocode, convert pseudocode into source code. After choosing programming language, you need to translate the mathematical formula to be used in the program 
to the form that programming language in the source code will accept and then you will have to line by line translate pseudocode to source code then you'll have to compile the program or run the program through interpreter if it's an interpreted language for compile language a compiler is required like visual studio 2012 is one example of the compiler Eclipse, you can use many compilers, but for interpreted language, an interpreter is, interpreter is needed. For example, for JavaScript, there is an interpreter inbuilt inside all browsers. And then, if there are errors in the source code, compiler will point that out. An interpretation error means interpreter will find some errors that you need to fix those errors. And then you need to run the program with large enough data sets that all line of code are executed. And then critically examine the output for each set of data. That's called desk checking, not disk, it's misspelled. And you have to fix any logical or runtime errors. And finally, submit the program for user testing. Uh, companies call that beta testing and then based on the testing response we'll have to upgrade uh, the parts of the source code and parts of the program okay actually program writing is an iterative process uh, computer scientists call that stepwise refinement and I'm going to show you parts of it and so basically we look at this picture and I'm not sure whether these parts are clear to you uh, in the video if they're not clear I'll be happy to provide a copy but basically you type your program partially or fully you compile your program okay so if you can't see it I can just kind of zoom portions of it so basically you type your program partially or fully then you compile your program and interpreted languages you will pass it through a interpreter then you look for compile or interpret errors and are there errors if answer is yes then you analyze and locate compiler errors and interpreter errors you fix them then you recompile the program or run it through interpreter again is still compile errors no in compile language you could get link errors okay that won't happen in some languages but it can happen like in C++ uh, if there are link errors then you analyze and locate link errors, fix link errors, and then you'll have to go back to the compile step. And if fixing link error introduce compilers, then you analyze again and compile the program. And once you've gotten rid of link and compile errors, then you run the program. Then you could have logic or runtime errors, like a formula maybe have been typed wrong or algorithm is wrong in some way okay so you analyze logic errors and fix them and then you go through compile and linking again and if there are none then you have success in the program okay so this picture whose details I showed you uh, shows that program writing in an iterative process if there is a problem in a step then user means you the program writer needs to step back and fix the problem by returning to the previous step and computer scientists call this process as stepwise refinement you refine each step until you're done okay Okay, we'll take a very small 
sequential structure programming which does not make any logical decisions or loops it basically uh, takes the value of certain variables do some computation and prints results to the console or screen in JavaScript to the web page and the reason we are doing that that we just want to show you example of a smaller SDLC okay so let's say user requirement is very simple user wishes that computer accepts input of two real numbers multiply them and outputs the original numbers and the product of input numbers to console real numbers are one that can contain fractions we'll talk about them a bit more okay and then in this case user requirement is small and specific uh, this will never be the case in real programs and software projects so in those cases substantial time will be spent in collecting the user requirement and then we analyze the user requirement and there are three parts to it first is the input so inputs are two real numbers that can contain fractional part or mantissa for example in number xx dot yy yy is the mentees or the fractional part and at this stage we pick their names so let's say num1 is the first number and num2 is the second number okay and then names of their types if required will be decided when we pick a programming language for coding then second part is what process going on in the computer when this program is going to run so computer will perform following mathematical operation when computing the product of num1 num2 or multiplication process basically this expression will be evaluated the right hand side num1 will be multiplied by num2 and the result will be stored in the product understand that in almost all programming languages multiplication symbol is asterisk programming language almost never use x or dot for multiplication unfortunately this causes a lot of angst in some mathematicians trying to learn programming next part in the user requirement is output and as mentioned in the user requirement output should print num1 num2 product on the console with of course wording describing as to what those outputs these three outputs are the rule of good software engineering is do not dump data on user without fully describing what data actually are so you should describe that hey this was the first number second number and this is the product of the two you don't just blurt out numbers onto the screen and second you rule is that use good English and phrase in outputs output should not have spelling errors okay so then we'll build flowchart after noting the user requirements and analyzing the user requirements as we did in the first uh, through the three steps the input process that will include collecting the mathematical formulas and the output and decision about wordings and all that and we will show that to you and other parts in the next video thanks see you in the next video we'll start with the flowcharts in the next video